Hey, the following message is top secret. Don't tell anyone. Okay, we're planning to launch the Kickstarter for 9 Point issue number 2, probably around July 16th. So, keep an eye out. We'll be promoting this a lot. And we're gonna print this heckin' second issue of 9 Point that I'm drawing right now. And I'm really excited. So, we will we'll let you know when the Kickstarter has begun. But it's gonna be soon. Get hype. I'm hype. Woo! On to the video, I am very aware that I just finished doing pencils, and I totally intended to still be working on pencils by the time I got to this topic, but I didn't think I'd get through them this fast. Weh. <laughs> um, so right now I'm working on colors, but I'm gonna talk about how to make your pencils real nice, and why pencils are important for your comics. Okay, so let's start with what the heck is the point of penciling? You probably already know this if you've looked at anything about making comics before, but it's probably a good idea to go over it in case you never knew. So, similar to, you know, penciling a drawing, it is guidance for your inking or your coloring or painting or whatever you're doing on top, um, and it is a stage where you can still change things very easily um, before you commit to it. Obviously, it's more important to be able to change things when you're working traditionally with like a regular pencil and ink, um, whereas in digital you can change things around even in the inking stage. But anyways, my dog is going crazy in a beanbag chair, <laughs> if you can hear that. But anyways, it's still, you know, it's good general practice to use pencils to build up your forms uh, so that your inking or coloring or whatever has a really nice solid foundation underneath it. Um, and that way you don't have to think about exactly what you're drawing when you are, you know, focusing on making your inks really nice. Okay, so what is the best way to make your pencils the most effective that they can be with your limited amount of time. Because remember, comics take forever, so we're going to try and make things go as fast as possible. Tip number one, when you're starting your pencils, focus on your gesture and fleshing out your layouts and placement. So obviously, pencils are the first step that follows finishing up your thumbnails. Um, so take those lovely compositions and layouts that you've made and start to flesh them out and make them feel real and use actual proportions of these wonderful characters you've designed and start actually putting in backgrounds and, you know, putting down rulers and stuff. But yeah, say with your characters, focus on your gesture, meaning the action or the pose of the character, um, and the placement of all the elements on the page, and making your composition 10 out of 10 perfect. Uh, I mean, it already is because you planned it out in your thumbnails, but now is the time to like put details in and make sure they still fit in with your composition. I find in my pencils, I'll, I'll usually catch mistakes that I might have left in my thumbnails. So I might rearrange one of my compositions if when it's all fleshed out, it doesn't look right. So now is the time to do all that stuff. And always make sure that you are keeping in your speech bubbles and your captions and your sound effects and you're drawing those in when you're working on your pencils. Otherwise, you're going to get to your inks and you're going to put your speech bubbles on top and nothing's going to fit right. So make sure you're planning out where those are early on. Okay? I'm warning you. Number two. Tip number two. Keep your lines really loose and fast. This will make your pencils faster, obviously, um, but it also keeps your pencils from getting stiff um, and looking awkward and like there's no movement in it. Because if your pencils are stiff, then your inks are going to get stiffer as they follow whatever you pencil underneath because they're literally your guidelines here. And don't worry too much about making your pencils like super tight and perfect. That is what inking is for, um, is to really perfect like the style and the lines and make sure they're nice and neat and perfect. Penciling is just to get these forms down to get like the movement and the structure underneath um and remember the reader when they look at your final form of the comic they're not going to see your pencils they're not going to see any little mistakes that you left in there they're going to be seeing the inks so don't worry too much about that save the super tight neat lines for your inking tip number three keep details for the inking <laughs> Uh, so, like I said before, um, people will be looking at your inks, not your pencils. Um, so, try not to spend forever working on little tiny details in your pencils. Um, for example, say you have, like, a character who has, like, buttons all down their 
clothes all over the place, tons of little tiny buttons, just gesture those in. Leave that for the inking stage. You'll remember they're there, um, especially if you if you have your character design sheet already. Um, so just leave that for now. Um, as long as you kind of leave a little note to yourself to remember to put it in when you're when you're inking. Working on every single little detail is just going to waste time uh, at this point, and it's better to just get it done quick and fast and move on to your inking where you can focus on this stuff and make it really pretty and nice. Tip number four, make sure that you are using your pencils to really structure things out. Use construction lines to build up your forms, you know, take out your ruler or whatever perspective tool you're using and put down lots and lots of guides for yourself. I personally will use like multiple layers on um, certain panels uh, if, you know, say like I'm just having a day where I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out like the form of this character or like um, their anatomy is really wonky. I will do multiple layers kind of building up and making sure that everything looks okay and I'm not leaving in like some really weird wonky pose or weird wonky anatomy and I'm making sure that I'm drawing in all of my backgrounds, making sure that I understand like the 3D structure of everything um, just so that when I'm inking I don't have to focus on that stuff and it won't slow me down. I can just ink on top and I'll know exactly what all these like shapes and forms mean. Now you can go as messy or as clean as you need, like totally leave those construction lines in, who cares? They're just as reference for you. No one else is going to see them. Um, but you can also go clean if that's what you really need for your inks to be nice on top. So you can go back and erase all things that you don't need. Whatever. Whatever works for you, as long as you're going quickly. And finally, number five, in addition to using like multiple layers for a lot of my pencils, um, I will also use different colors of pencil to differentiate different pieces of my panel or drawing. Um, so for example, if I'm working on a really super detailed panel uh, that has like several characters and several background elements and there's lots of depth to it, I will use different colors to show different characters or the different like layers of, of space, I guess. Um, you know, use different colors for buildings and versus people or even every single individual character get their own color uh, just so I can understand everything that's going on in this really complicated piece. And I find that really helps me just kind of parse through everything and understand it really quickly so that I don't accidentally ink it so that someone's arm is connected to the wrong person or something like that. Whatever helps you understand things later down the line because you might not touch your uh, your pencils till and start inking them until way after you've created them. So anything you can leave as like a little note or hint as to what everything is, the better. Oh, I just thought of another tip that I didn't write down in my script. Okay, tip number six. You're getting a bonus tip here. If possible, do all of your pencils together or at least do a large section of your pencils at once. And the reason you should do this instead of drawing, say, like one or two pencils and then jumping into inks is because it's really hard to jump from, or at least it, it slows you down, to jump from one portion of comics to another. At least it does for me. So if I am working on a pencil and then I have to jump to inking it, like that's a whole other mindset that I have to put myself in where I have to suddenly be a lot neater and really focus on detail and like putting in style and line quality and stuff like that. Um, so like I have to kind of shift gears and it can be really hard and it can really slow me down. Um, so what I usually do is I'll make a batch of pencils. Um, so for example, with Nine Point, I did just pencil out the whole issue like all 50 something pages at once instead of skipping around between different stages because then you can just put all your focus into penciling and what it means to pencil stuff. You can easily flip through all your pages and understand like okay this is how I pencil this one, this is how I'll pencil this one, and it just makes it way easier on your brain and reduces that crazy thinky load stuff. So work on it in batches if you can. Work, at least work on it in batches and if you can pencil all your stuff before you start inking. At least a few pages. Give me that, okay? Okay, so yeah, um, I tend to do my pencils very quickly, like I said. That keeps my art more fluid and full of movement, um, and it leaves my effort and thinky space for inking. And in the case of Nine Point, um, I'm not doing inks, I'm just skipping on to colors. But I tend to leave all my detail work till the very end, unless it's something that, like, requires a lot of attention from the start, like maybe a really specific detailed pattern or something like that. Though I also have the virtue of, like, 
being the only artist on this project, which is both a virtue and hell. <laughs> but, um, so I don't need my pencils to be super neat because I'm not passing them on to someone else to do the inking or coloring. So, you know, if there's some weird scribble that only I understand, that's okay. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'm the only one who has to work on it, so it's fine. Um, unless Bones looks at it and he's like, I don't understand what, it, what the heck is this, but usually I can just be like, oh, it's this. And he's like, okay make that better when you ink. And I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah, when you're working on it by yourself, you have a lot more liberty to just throw neatness out the window. But if you're working with someone else, like a partner, someone who's going to ink it, or someone who's going to like continue drawing it, whatever your situation is, maybe go a little bit neater and be a, li a little bit more like precise with showing your ideas so that they don't accidentally ink it incorrectly and cause a, a fuss. So I hope that helps with you figuring out what to do when you're penciling. Um, penciling is definitely my favorite step. It's really fun. Um, and it's like the most drawing you'll be doing. I mean, like inking is still drawing and pen and coloring is still art and stuff. However, it's like, it's the like most fresh part of making comics I find. Cause everything you put down is new. Everything is like novel. Whereas inking is like, you're going over stuff you've already drawn. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, you're putting in like more style and like you're perfecting things, which is fun in its own right. But like, maybe it's just me, but I get kind of bored at the end of like inking a page. I'm like, oh, I just want this to be done and start on a new one. Um, whereas like in the penciling process, it's all new. Every time I sit down to draw, it's like a new section I'm drawing. So it's all new and fresh and fun. So yeah, that's, that's what I like. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> so yeah, um, okay, I'm gonna go make kettle corn. Drizzle some peanut butter on top, so delicious. Just as a reminder, the Kickstarter, July 16th. Check it out, see you there. Buy Nine Point if you're interested. It would mean a lot to us. Um, and yeah, I'll let you know when the Kickstarter begins, but we're, we're gonna be selling issue number two. If you haven't got it already, you can get issue one through the Kickstarter. We do have a store where you can buy issue number one if you want to read it right now before the Kickstarter for issue number two starts. So yeah, link to the store down below. Um, subscribe if you want more comic content. And if you want to know when the Kickstarter begins, because we'll definitely announce it on here. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go actually make this kettle corn. Um, so goodbye. See you later. Good luck on your pencils. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, bye.